Hi, I'm Peter the Chemist. Welcome to my open educational resource video on advanced chemical problem solving. For that course that involves, let's say, gases, equilibrium, acids and bases, titrations. Yeah, there's some pretty heavy problem solving there. So let's walk through how we might approach problem solving in a class like this. Most of the problem solving you're going to see in a course like this is really falling under the domain of chemistry, which is known as physical chemistry. Let's try and connect our observations of the world around us, where we see the patterns in the behavior in, let's say, something like chemistry, and we try and develop mathematical relationships that show that connection and pattern. And then we say to ourselves, look, somewhere underneath that pattern, there is an underlying reason for what's happening. And so we develop our concepts and models to explain those mathematical relationships we've come up with. And so the more strongly you understand the concepts underneath the chemistry, the more easily solving problems with the math will be as well. And so we always want to strive to understand how to solve a problem over remembering how to solve a problem. There's really going to be two types of problems. The first is, let's explain your understanding of a concept. We may ask you to do that in some very specific chemical language. But when you've developed these understandings of concept, I realize that you're doing that based on all of your learning and understanding of the world around you based on your experiences. And so bring those to bear. Make sure you communicate that understanding of the world around you and connect it to the language and concepts of chemistry. And that is a really effective way of showing understanding on both sides of the evaluation. The other kind of problem solving is calculation based. Yep, let's find the equation, let's throw in some numbers, and let's solve for the thing we don't know. These problems can get quite complicated. There can get to be a lot of data, and there could be several steps to it. Now for the kind of course that we're talking about here, it's probably not going to be that intense, but yeah. I know there's people out there who think my math skills, I'm not so sure about them. Or every time I see a bunch of numbers, I just get really confused. And that's the whole point. We want to help you learn how to take some of that confusion and take some of that worry and realize that, no, you're a problem solver. You're going to get this. We're going to help you get there. So explanation questions, make sure you can communicate effectively your understanding of the concept. If you're talking about the motion of molecules, compare it to things that you've seen in your own life. If you're talking about the idea of balance in equilibrium, you can compare that to things that you've seen in your own life. Just make sure that we understand that comparison. And if you can connect it to the language of chemistry as well, then that's really going to show some effective understanding. Now, if you can also condense that down, if you have to write something, condense that down into something clear and concise, because that's going to show better understanding than if you kind of ramble on, kind of like I'm doing right now. So I'm going to move on to the next slide. Calculation questions. It's really going to be about, let's find the equation, throw the numbers in, let's solve for the one thing we don't know. But there's a lot of places where things can go wrong. So when you show the equations you use, when you put the substituted data in there with units, and then you show your conversion factors, and finally your answer with the correct C units and sig figs, and then summarize that answer. These are all important connected concepts in chemistry. Each of these bits and pieces show us that you have a strong understanding. I know for some people showing your work is not always the most comfortable and you know what you're doing. Then find other ways to effectively communicate this because we need to make sure that we're all on the same page when it comes to understanding where our knowledge is. A good rule of thumb is if I were evaluating something that you've written or if I were to evaluate some work that you did in solving a chemical problem, I'm not able to ask you, well, what were you thinking right here when you wrote this down? So what 
you can do is just tell me what you're doing. Just little written words and phrases. I'm going to calculate molarity now. And I could even just condense that down to molarity calc. Things like that. If you're communicating what you're doing, you're showing the logical project, uh, progression through the problem as well. And so even someone who might do the problem themselves in a very different way can say, wait a second, I can see where this is going. And yeah, we're going to get to the same place. So everyone's going to approach problem solving differently, and that's great. We all have our experience. Let's bring that to bear communicating how you're solving, how you're logically constructing the solution to your problem, that also becomes part of the job. An effective way to solve a problem convinces that if someone's evaluating you, you didn't guess at the answer. If you can show your work, that's going to help. If you can communicate, this is why I'm doing this, that's going to help. So do everything you can in an evaluation context to show what you know, because you've earned that knowledge. So, steps to problem solving. First, you've got to identify the question that you're being asked. It's pretty simple. I can't answer a question if I don't know what it is. Once I've identified that question, I'm probably going to have to break it down into a bunch of pieces, a bit of understanding of what's all in there. What is the actual question? What other pieces of information do I know? Wait a second, there may be stuff missing here. Those are the kind of things that can happen. Once we've kind of figured that out, we're going to formulate a plan to solve that problem. Once we have that plan, let's organize the information, figure out where it all slots into the plan, which pieces go where. If there's other information that you think, wait a second, I might need to have this or that to really solve the problem to get to this last final answer, then yeah, where do I need to find it? Do I have to calculate some other smaller problem? Do I need to look this up? Once everything is organized, you've brought everything together, solve the problem. And number six, often the hardest part, because this comes with practice, is you need to use your experience and intuition to assess whether the answer seems right. For example, if I were to ever do a molar mass calculation and get a molar mass of 0.5 grams per mole, I know there's a problem. The lightest element in our universe is hydrogen with a molar mass of one gram per mole. 0.5 grams per mole just isn't possible. That's the kind of experience and intuition that comes with practice and problem solving. So first, you're going to have to identify your question. Again, lots of numbers being thrown at you big tangled mess in terms of identifying the problem. So ignore them. Usually what you're going to find is the problem actually comes in two pieces. There's a preamble just kind of setting things up and then there's the actual question hidden somewhere in there. Not that we're trying to be tricky or anything. It's just that look, we're human beings like everyone else. We don't necessarily always ask questions in the most effective way. And so being able to understand what I'm asking becomes a team effort. So try and find your question word in the problem. Why? Because once you have a question word, usually what happens right after that question word is what you're actually specifically being asked to answer. If I'm doing an explanation question, there are lots of question words that are going to be signals for you. Who, what, where, when, why, and how are kind of the big ones of just the English language. Now in a course like this, we're probably not going to be too worried about who. We're probably not going to be too worried about when. Where doesn't mean too much. How could be interesting. Why could be interesting. And what could be interesting. But there are other words that are not directly connected to questions. Explain, discuss, comment, state, describe. Really, anything that says, tell me. That's me asking you, what's your understanding of this particular concept in a chemical context? How can you connect it to me with other pieces of learning? Calculation questions are usually going to be a little more obvious. 
we're going to see that what again. It's pretty much multi-purpose in terms of asking chemistry questions, but calculations often imply numbers. So you're going to see things like how many, assess, calculate, evaluate, solve, enumerate. There's all sorts of different ways. I can't list them all, but get used to picking those questions out. These are going to be seen quite a bit. And so understanding that they're coming, you're already well armed to do some good problem solving.